it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using this Hello Bluebird set called Strawberry Jam. So I've stamped out the images I'll be using on some Nina Solar White cardstock with Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I have my images on two different sheets, so I'm starting with the critters, and for the little mouse, I'm coloring him with E50, E51, E53, and E55. I thought I would do a little brown field mouse. So I'm starting with that E55 and laying in a little shadow, mostly down the back of his body and then on the underside of his arms and feet. And then I'm going to begin to pull that color out with the E53. I'm still sticking pretty close to the edge for these darker colors because I wanted him to get nice and light on his face and belly. So now I'm going to bring out that E51, pulling that toward his face, but still leaving almost half of him for that lightest shade, that E50. I'm also going to fill in most of his ear, and then I can bring in that E50 and finish him off. So I just wanted that little bit of brown in his ear, and I'm also going to end up adding it on the tail just as an undertone, and then I can add some pink over that later on. I did do a double layer of all of my colors just to increase that saturation and get a really nice blend. So I just quickly went over him one more time. It's nice and easy to do because all the colors are already mapped out for you once you've done this once. And then you can just go back in quickly with that second layer. And as I said, I will add just a little bit of brown to his tail with that E51. And while I had these browns out, I also used the E55 for the crust of my bread, and then the E51 and E50 for the actual uh, inside of the bread. I'm bringing in R11 and R12 to color in the inside of his ear and his nose and also the tail. So I added a little of the R11 first and then blended out with the R12. I also gave him a rosy cheek with the darkest shade. Moving on to the bird, I wanted him to kind of look like a chickadee. He's not going to look exactly like a chickadee because the cap on top of the head would have to come down much farther. Um, but I just kind of wanted to do a nod to a chickadee. So I'm starting with some yellows, Y000 and Y11, and giving him a little yellow belly. I'm also adding in some yellow to the top of his wing and to the uh, edge of his tail that is attached to his body. And then I'm going to bring in W7 and W9 to do that black cap on the top of the head. That W9 is super dark, it's almost black, so I just used a little bit of that and then pulled that out with the W7. And then I needed to soften that up, it was just getting a little too dark, so I brought in the W5 to pull that forward and also go across the eye. I didn't want you to lose that and not be able to see his eye. So chickadees have a black bonnet on top and then a gray body, wing, and tail. So I had to add in the W3 and W1 to lighten things up. So I started with that W7 just a little bit on the tip of the tail and the tip of his wings. And then I'm blending upward with that W5. And then I'm going to come in next with the W3 and I'm gonna pull right into the yellow area and cover some of that up. Just get a nice transition from that yellow to the gray. And then I'll finish up with a little bit of W1. And then I'm going to repeat these steps from the back of the bird's body going towards his belly. So I have to warn you guys, this video is definitely um, coloring heavy. <laughs> There's a lot of coloring in this video. Um, I have been really eager to play with this set for a long time. Um, so I was just having fun. And also the more that I work on the, my Copic's favorite series for you guys, the more I just play around with color and practice new things. So there's even going to be a simple Copic colored background later on in the video. 
Um, so if coloring is not your thing, this may not be the video for you. You may want to find one of the other videos that uh, has a little bit of less coloring in it. Um, but if coloring is your thing, this video is going to be perfect for you. Um, so now I'm just using a little bit of that W1 to add a little shading to the part of his face that I want to keep white. And then I just blended over the edge of that with the colorless blender. Chickadees also have black beaks, so I used the W7 and W5 for that. And then I came back in with my R11 and gave him a little rosy cheek. So I wanted my jam jar to look like clear glass, so I'm using a little BG10 to outline it and also just bring in that area where it's tapered so you get that nice curve. And then I'm going to use R22 and R24 to color in the jam inside, but I'm not going to bring that color all the way to the black line. I want to leave a little sliver of space for the thickness of the glass. So I'm going to color right over that word jams that it looks like they've used a little bit of it. <laughs> so it's not quite full to the top. And then I'm also going to use those same two colors to add a little bit of jelly on top of the bread. I'll bring in C1 to color the handle of the spoon that's down inside the jar and also the knife. And I also used it to add just a little bit of shading to the plate and the mugs. And then I wanted to add a little detail to the dishes and make them match. So I used YG17 to color in the rim of the plate and also to add a little stripe to the top of the two mugs. And then I'm going to add YG11 and YG13 and use these three shades to color in the little caterpillar. And once I added in that YG11, it really pushed back those darker two shades. So I am going to come back and add a little bit more of them. I'll bring in the YG17 first and just add a touch more of that and then flick the YG13 into the YG11. And I just had to add a little rosy cheek to him as well, so I dotted on a tiny bit of that R11. All right, so I'm moving on to the second panel of strawberry vines. And this one I'm going to go a lot quicker through because a lot of the images are the same. So I'm going to just do some of them on camera and save a little time in the video for you guys by doing the rest of it off screen. So I started with the G28 to color in the vine. And because most of it was pretty narrow, I just used the one color. I left room for a second shade on just a few little areas. So I used the G21 to finish off those. But I'm going to also add in the G20. And I end up bringing in the G24 as well for the leaves because I just wasn't getting quite a good blend like I wanted. So once again, I'm starting with that darkest shade, the G28, and I'm using that uh, closest to the stem of the leaves and blending lighter and lighter toward the tip of the leaf. So next comes the G24, and I really work hard at breaking up the edge of that G28 and moving that pigment forward on that leaf and just pulling it toward the tip. And then I do the same with the G21. It's a little bit easier because these shades are quite similar. And then finally a little bit of that G20 so it gets nice and bright on the end. For the strawberry blossoms, I'm using Y13 and Y11 for the centers. And then I'm adding in a little Y000 on the petals and I'm just keeping that color close toward the center and letting it fade to white on the tips. And then for the strawberries I'm using R22, R24, and R29. So I'm starting with the R29 and I'm going to put that down the right hand side of each berry and then blend toward the center with the R24. And I'm trying hard to avoid the little seeds, but I just refilled a lot of my markers. And so they're very, very juicy and it's very hard to avoid them. So I'm going to show you how to whiten those up uh, in just a minute. 
So the highlight shade is that R22 and that is going on the far left and I did that for all the berries on both the right and the left side just to keep them consistent. So I'm just going to finish up these last couple berries on the left hand vine and then I'll do the one on the right off screen. And then to whiten up those berries, like I mentioned, I'm going to take a Sakura white jelly roll pen and I'm just going to quickly dot over all of those seeds, just the ones that I felt needed brightening up. Um, some of them were white enough, so I just left them. And once I finish this up, I will trim all of the images out with their matching dies. For the focal panel, I'm using the Lawn Fawn Stitch Scalloped Rectangle Frames and I'm going to set aside the frame part for now and just work on the inside panel. I just set that on top of a piece of cheap white cardstock so that I don't get marker all over my desk and I'm going to quickly color in a simple background. So I'm using YG03 to lay down some grass and just kind of go over that so it's not quite so streaky. I don't mind a little bit of streakiness, um, but I don't want as much as there was. Then I'm going to take BG11 and start to blend upward for the sky. I'm gonna go about halfway up the sky and then I'll swap that for the BG10. And that way the sky will kind of fade as it goes upward. I forgot to set the marker cap down for this one, but it was BG13 and I just added a little bit of shading from each side kind of to give me a wispy cloudy look and then I'm going to blend that out with the BG11. So this is just a very simply colored background that anybody can do. Our images are going to take up most of the scene, so you really don't need to do too much here. I also blended out with a little BG10. And then for the grass, I'm going to bring in YG17 and kind of do the same thing. Just pull in a little bit of streakiness from the side so that we have some shadows playing across the grass and then blend that out with the YG03 again. So in the top left corner of this panel, I'm going to stamp a sentiment from Meadow Bunnies. And then on the inside of my card base, I'm going to stamp one of the field mice from that stamp set from Hello Bluebird. And then the sentiment is also from the Meadow Bunnies. And I'm stamping that in Merman ink on some MFT snow cone cardstock. So I stamped that a couple of times. The sentiment was a brand new image, so I did have to wipe that off and then stamp it one more time to get a clear impression. So I have to apologize for some missing footage here. My camera battery died and I didn't realize it right away. So the pattern paper that I used on today's card was from the Summer Market Collection by Cardabella. It's a really beautiful paper pad. Um, and I trimmed that down with the Lawn Fawn Outside In Stitch Rectangle Stackables. So it had that nice border that almost perfectly matches with that snow cone cardstock. And then I uh, popped up my white frame with a thin strip of foam tape all around and then added the inside portion uh, flat to the card with some liquid glue. And now I am adhering my images, starting with the strawberry vines. I'm using a mixture of foam tape and liquid glue. I'm kind of propping it up on that white frame, but anything that overlaps and needed some extra support, I added a bit of foam tape underneath. I also stamped and die cut the little picnic blanket out of a piece of pattern paper from that same pad. And now I'm just taking a warm gray marker and adding a tiny bit of shading to the edges so that it matches with the colored images. And I thought that was really cute with that little gingham print there. Then I'm going to begin to add my little critters and picnic scene in the center. So they'll be adhered flat to the card. So I started with the little mouse and then I want to get the bird on there right away so that I can adjust them while that liquid glue is still wet and so I can get them spaced just perfectly. 
and then I can begin to uh, set their little picnic. So I'm going to add the plate with the bread and I'm going to add the little knife so that it's kind of overlapping the plate a little bit because um, that's the proper thing to do and you don't want to put your jammy knife all over the nice blanket. Um, and then I added the little jam jar up towards the top of the blanket just to kind of fill in that hole there. And then I've got these two little mugs. I thought about putting it in the mouse's hand, but I decided to uh, add it to the blanket. So I'm gonna put his right in front of him. And then the bird's mug is kind of overlapping him a little bit too, just to kind of integrate it into the scene. And then finally I have the little caterpillar that's going to be looking on from his perch on the vine. And I did decide to add a little piece of foam tape right behind his head just to help him be a little more supported on that area that he is kind of just sticking out there. As a finishing touch, I decided to add a little glossy accents over the jam jar and also on the jam on the bread so that it would have a nice shine to it. It goes on a little bit milky, but it will dry crystal clear. And that is going to finish my card for today. Here's an up close look and another peek at the inside. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you missed any of the products, they are listed and linked below in the description bar as always. So if you did like it, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. I post new videos every Monday and occasional bonus videos as well. And if you'd like to be sure that my videos always end up in your feed, just go ahead and ring that notification bell. Here are two extra videos I thought you might also be interested in, so you can click on either one of those to check them out. And I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.